<laughs> now, if you're into steam, we've got something that's right up your street, or should I say right up your track? I think you probably should, yes! We're talking model railways, tiny toy trains with a big idea of a man called Frank Hornby. His first trains were quite big and they ran on a track size called O-Gage, but the track was too large for the average bedroom, so he started making trains half the size, double O, the size you can buy today. In fact, my dad built me a massive train set in my loft when I was young. Oh, great fun. Play Marvelous. with the points there. Yeah, fantastic. Now, this fantastic collection of over a thousand items of Hornby trains, carriages and buildings are going to be auctioned in London next month. The collection spans the entire history of the Hornby double O from 1938 to the time the company was taken over in 1964. And the whole lot is expected to sell for more than £100,000. But the reason why the collection is so special is that everything here is still in very, very good condition. Still with its original boxes, like this one. This is one of the highlights of the auction, and it's just as it would have been nearly 60 years ago. It's even got here the original instructions, still in brilliant condition. In 1938, this would have cost £1.25, but it's expected to sell for as much as £900. And this one's so precious, we can't even put it on the track. We can't, but we have been granted a special permission to show you some of the other rare items in the auction, because it's not just trains. This 1938 wooden city station complete with platforms and this marvellous glass canopy be careful there Mabel it was a collector's item now and even though it cost about £4.50 when it was new it will probably fetch around £1,000 and the track is very special too because all of Hornby's trains until 1959 ran on a three rail track as opposed to two Stuart Miles what are you doing? All aboard, all aboard now, Hornby based his trains on the real thing, and this is one of the earliest models in the collection. It's a perfect replica of the Sir Nigel Gressley Pacific locomotive, named after the man who don't designed it. <laughs> and it was run by the London Northeastern Railway, and it would bomb up to Scotland, reaching speeds of over 100 miles an hour. Not bad for an engine that was in service 58 years ago. Well, how about this one then? This is a 1950s, the N2, Southern Steam Loco. It was also designed by Sir Nigel, but instead of going for glamorous runs to Scotland, it would shunt along on suburban routes in North London, although it doesn't look like it's going to do any shunting today. But there's something rather odd going on here because it's called the Southern, but it's actually a London North Eastern engine painted in Southern colours, and this makes it pretty rare. Original price, about 90 pence. Expected sale price, £350. But steam didn't last forever. One of the, what was that behind me? One of the, get your hands out. One of the finest steam trains to be built and the last one to be copied by Hornby was this, the British Railway Pacific City of Liverpool. Originally £1.40, expected price £600. But the, by the 1950s, steam began to be phased out to be replaced by diesel engines and Hornby changed from a three rail track to the two rail version that we have here in our Blue Peter layout today. Now this is a diesel locomotive, the British Rail Deltic, and it replaced the good old Sir Nigel Grizzly on the London to Scotland run. These engines were still pretty flash and continued to be the great way to travel in style. <laughs> now, the whole lot goes under the hammer at Christie's at the end of October. And the moral of the story is, don't throw your toys out all their boxes because one day they just might become a collector's item and be worth a fortune. Well, I gave mine away to somebody else, but a slightly bigger train we know well is the famous LNER A2 class Pacific locomotive, the 532 Blue Peter. Since 1968, we've followed her progress from rusting scrap to beautifully restored steam engine. And after an accident in 1994, Blue Peter was off the rails for many months. But the good news is she's steaming again and she'll be at the North Yorkshire Moors Railway at Gromont until the 6th of October.